Hello, this is a painter, and today we're going to be painting Bellacore. Here is the finished model. It's mostly dry brush. Uh, some parts I use airbrush, but um, you can do, you can use a brush to um, get the same effect, and I'll explain that a bit later. So first off, I base the model uh, with Incubi Darkness. It's a it's got a blue tinge to it, and then I use Stanish Gray on the like under the arms, the belly. Uh, parts of the wings as well and actually the back of the legs under the tail These parts I wanted them to be a bit lighter You don't have to be too tidy with this. It's just blocking them out, but try not to paint over the uh, the spikes the scaly spikes uh, Now I'm going to dry brush over it with um, rack white uh, This is not a true white It's a bit like wraith bone uh, but I found it was quite um, a nice color, it wasn't too sharp and it kind of gave a nice pale uh, highlight to the muscles and defined certain areas more. I focused more on the chest itself and the uh, abdomen. Because I really wanted that part to be slightly more pale and less um, pink. Uh, so you may end up sometimes with a bit too much um, paint on the brush. Uh, and it might be a, it look it, it might look pretty strong, but don't worry about that. We have a step later on to tone down these um, colors. I also added some of the rack white to the tabard and other areas that I knew later I'd apply contrast over them. Um, I also added it to the uh, part to the wings the uh, arms of the wings, not the actual uh, membranes. So using Basilicanum Grey, I'll use this now as a way to help the light skin uh, transition into the dark skin. Uh, this is a, a glazing technique where what I do for this one, I, I put the paint quite thick on the dark skin and then I wash my brush and then use water only to drag and move the paint around, uh, which resting on the line uh, where it goes from light to dark and I just keep building up that layer to add a nice transition for the things like here like the shoulder it has some spikes and on the thigh as well I will add I make the paint a little bit thicker there but as it goes closer to the uh, flesh as you can see it's a bit thinner now because I've added water to it I just spread it around and then treat it as a, a shade and I do the same thing with the chest and the abdomen as well
for these parts, as I mentioned before, I add the thick layer of paint because the uh, dry brushing was quite, I added a bit too much paint uh, on the brush when I dry brushed it and I don't really like how sharp it is so I'm just adding the Basilic and Grey quite thickly on these areas to tone them down and make them darker uh, to improve the contrast between the, the light flesh and the dark flesh. So now I'm going back to the rack white, but this time I'm lightly dry brushing. There's hardly any paint on the brush. I'm just focusing it predominantly on the muscles, on the belly and the arms. Uh, I'm going downwards so I can catch all the corners.
Whenever I paint red, I do like to use Flesh Terrors Red as a base coat. It applies really well. And because I've dry brushed already as well over it, when I add the contrast, it will pick out the areas that I need to highlight later. I have some missing footage here, so I based the silver parts with steel, uh, Vallejo True Metal, it's a pretty cool range, uh, applies really well, and then I dry brushed silver from the same uh, line over it, and just hitting the edges of the metal plates. So I use Necro Gold, or if you don't have it, you can use uh, Rune Lord Brass, which is from Citadel. That's quite a similar colour, and it works really well for Chaos models when you're painting the trim. I paint the protruding spikes with Black Templars now. On the membranes I use pterodon turquoise, I don't really thin it down, I just out of the parts slap it all on the wings. You may add some water just to spread it out easier, uh, but that's it's pretty simple. Just go through the, mem uh, cover the membranes with this paint, uh, don't forget to paint the back of the wings too.
I use Thunderhawk Blue on the wings just to make them pop a bit more. They seemed a bit flat. When dry brushing, just pay attention to how the folds work on the on the wings and go against the folds so you can catch all the little creases and so on. I focus my dry brushing in the middle of the wing where it bends so the outside is a bit darker just to give it some more uh, definition or um, shape to it. Go very light with this color when you dry brush. It's a very um, sharp color which can uh, has, it's, it seems to have high pigment. So just make sure you have as little as possible on the brush and just paint the sharpest air of the, of the wings. I do find non-oil gloss flows very well over the um, Vallejo True Metal range. For the tabard or loin cough, I'm going to not focus too much on highlighting here because later on I'm going to add some OSL which is going to further make it pop or it's actually going to hide most of the blending and shading I'm going to do now. Also, because it's a high pigment paint, don't worry if it looks too strong or it's... When it dries, it does tone down a, a lot. So now, as you can see now, it looks quite... Uh, you know, it's popping a bit too much, right? But once it dries, it, it does tone down and then you can actually start uh, blending it. Maybe if you want to go back using a darker red, uh, like corn red, then you can glaze them together and then tone it down a bit more that way. So I have very little paint on my brush now and what I'm, I'm kind of doing, I'm dry brushing you, you could say. Uh, as you can see I'm dry brushing in the gaps of the folds. And I don't know, I've just really recently started doing this and I think it turns out pretty well and it doesn't require a lot of effort or skill and it saves a lot of time.
To be honest, you could leave it here. This would be finished. If you're happy with it. Uh, but for the next part, I'm going to focus on the base and the OSL elements of the model. So I won't spend too long on the base itself, on the stone areas. It's just going to be basic dry brushing with a standard Mechanicus Grey for the darker color. And then I'm going to highlight that with ad Administration Grey. But to be honest, you can use any dark brown, uh, sorry, any dark grey and then a lighter grey. And then you may even use a white for the final highlights just to make some of the areas and the corners of the rocks pop because that will help later on when it comes to painting the fluorescent paint. I forgot to mention that I added the um, chains onto the wings and to the base. I, I glued them on separately, I painted them silver and I used the same step as I did with all the other silver parts on the model. So now I paint all the skulls on the base and the bellicle model itself. I was actually quite surprised how many skulls there were. But to be honest, I shouldn't be surprised because it is chaos. Uh, so yeah, it'll take a while to find them all. And some you might miss, and then you have to paint them again. And then you'll find another one. It never ends. Corn would be proud, to be honest. Thank you. 
Also when the paint starts to dry, I use that time to edge highlight or dry brush the corners of the rocks, uh, especially where the cracks are because later on these cracks will be filled with white and then fluorescent paint and so on. And also if they're highlighted then once you add the fluorescent paint they'll really pop a bit more and it will add to the, um, the effect of showing heat. If you want the schools to be a bit whiter, then you can use basilicum grey for this step. I dry brush a bit of white scar or any kind of sharp white colour. You can even use pallid witch flesh onto all the skulls that I've painted now. And you can even dry brush the base a bit as well with that bright white paint. I'm adding some edge highlighting with the dry brush now for the sword just to prepare it for some OSL later on. So when I paint OSL, I always paint Corex White first because it covers really well. And then I paint over that Corex White with White Scar and that will help brighten it up a bit.
I also added my own streams of lava flowing around the bottom of the base. So now the fun part, I paint the fluorescent yellow on all the white areas, except for Bellicle, because he'll be a different color later. I remember sharing this model at this stage as like a work in progress and uh, someone commented Bellacor had an accident, he couldn't go to the toilet in time or something. <laughs> How I use, it's quite important to use fluorescent red. There's not too many companies that sell red fluorescent, there's a lot of pink and similar to red. So I, so far this is the only brand I've been using. And I had to order it on eBay to find it again because I couldn't find it where I live. I just sprayed all over the areas that have yellow on it. But for example, um, how to explain this? I'd focus airbrushing on the outside of the uh, yellow onto the black rock, but some of it would go inside the streams of lava. So you, as you can see, some parts are brighter because I've left them intentionally yellow and then I'm focusing more on the outside of the streams. I also focus on the knees or the bottom of the legs, the lower parts of the armor plates and the, the tips, the edges of the skulls and the sharp rocks. So with OSL, it's very tricky because my first few OSL moments, it just looked like the model was green or red. It didn't look like there's any gradients. So I, I use red now because it's a darker color. So it's not as bright. So in the middle, it's yellow, then it goes to orange and then it goes to a red. And the, the less pressure you have on the airbrush and the further away the airbrush is to the model, the red airbrush color, uh, the red color will be faded. So if I didn't have an airbrush, this is still fine to do. Um, I would just focus 
the paint on the outside areas and the, the red paint that goes onto the black rocks I would add an extra bit of water to that and thin it and then spread it out and the further away from the, the, the center of the flame I get to I will um, add more water Now I use orange to highlight some areas that would be catching the, the light from the fire. So that would be like at the corners of the tabard or on the knees or on the sharp details like the rocks. Just those areas and even a little bit on the skulls is fine too. So it's all about edge highlighting areas you think the light would be catching it.
It's looking a bit too orange now, so I'm going to add some strong contrasting color, which is yellow, and aim that to the areas where it would be the hottest. So that would, for me, it would be in the center of the stream. Going along, be careful. Uh, you can use water to tidy it up if you get it everywhere. The problem with this fluorescent paint, it's not really a problem, but I find you need to um, don't thin it for this part. Just make, just get a big blob on your brush and just stick it on there. And uh, it also adds some texture too, which is quite cool. Once it dries, it has like a, a kind of realistic looking lava effect. Also what I like to do is once the paint gets a bit dry on my brush, I start to um, dry brush basically uh, the fluorescent paint over the rocks and certain areas where the light is strongest. Uh, I like to dry brush on the rocks especially, especially on the ground. I said it especially twice then didn't I? Uh, because it really helps highlight the areas and adds a bit more of a, like a glow to it as well. I took a while thinking which color to use and I went with a pink color. I just thought it would be, if I went for blue on the sword, it might look a bit too cold, I don't know. And then uh, on the chest, if I added red flames, it will be similar to the base. So I went with pink for the sword and the cross and his eyes.
So I'm using the same techniques as I did on the base. I'm dry brushing, I'm edge highlighting areas that would be picked up by the, uh, which would pick up the light. It's a very bright color now because of the pigment is super high. But once it dries, it's not that bright. For example, the horn now, you can see the horn is a real bright pink spot on it. That will die down once it dries. Uh, if it doesn't, then you can go over the horn with balasikinum, I can't even say it, balasikinum gray, I can't even say it, uh, that contrast paint I used earlier to darken down those um, black areas. So I still need to add more yellow to the areas that I added it to before. Um, I just need to keep building up the layer until I'm happy with it, till it's nice and bright and sharp looking. With a brush you can do this, you just thin down that fluorescent red and just paint it on the wings, but you you pull the brush down, okay, towards the base. 
And then you just make sure it's stronger on the tips of the wings. And then it fades off the higher it gets. And these wings are just picking up the um, flames from the base and so on. You can even add some pink if you wanted to in, into the, uh, the, the, the membranes of the wing closest to the blade.
I want to darken these areas so I focus this paint, which I can't pronounce, onto the tops of the rocks or in the shadows uh, at, underneath the steps. So just you can judge it by yourself when you're painting this part. If you have too much yellow or too much orange glow somewhere, and it's just not looking that there's not too much contrast going on, you can go over it with this paint. I now use a purple fluorescent just as a kind of shade over the sword and I just I don't really thin it down at first I just plonk it on which means I just slap it on make it nice and thick and then what I do because it's quite runny already it's kind of like a, it feels like a glaze type of paint I just push the paint around now and I make sure like I cover the areas where I dry brushed before uh, so for like the tips of the sword for example uh, those areas might have some white remaining uh, or just areas that aren't covered well with the color I just move the paint around I add a bit of water to some areas like the flames Again, I use my hand to, to hold the sword, otherwise it will bend and snap. I focus the, uh, the white onto the middle of the sword, uh, but I also aim it closer to where uh, the flames are coming from, so they're coming from the center of the sword, so I focus a bit more there. But then towards the end, once the paint runs out, I will focus a little bit to the top of the blades, uh, to the top of the flames, just to give them a little tiny highlight
So just to finish it off, I use I dry brush white on the muscles, uh, just to sharpen them a bit. And here we go. This is Bellacore, ready for battle and ready to kick some ass. Mm -hmm.